haciendo un recuento de los actos terroristas llevados a cabo contra Cuba, tenemos los siguientes. Año 1976, una bomba es colocada en la embajada cubana de Portugal, ocasionando la muerte de dos compañeros. 6 de octubre es destruido en pleno vuelo un avión de cubana de aviación con 73 personas a bordo. Detrás de estos hechos está la CIA y casi sin, sin excepción las organizaciones terroristas que radican en Estados Unidos y actúan impunemente en territorio de ese país. In the mid-1980s, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan established Radio Marti News Channel for the Cuban people who have been denied full access to information. For instance, people are not informed of the time when a hurricane hits their country. This has happened before. Radio Marti has actually backed the Cuban nation and tries to convey no political messages. Donde se evita. To me, Miami is the political hub of Hispanic Americans. It's just enough to watch the TV programs covering various political issues at national and international levels in Spanish and English. The radio channels have the same story. You may remember what happened to Jose Guilen. All of these issues just happened in the political hub of Miami, where people need to gain political insight. But in Miami, there are only anti-Castro views. This political culture suppresses any statements made in support of Cuba or of Castro. As stated by Ricardo, a Waldo Gillen, the head of the baseball team, was attacked. In an interview with the Times, he said that he had respect for Fidel Castro because of the way that he holds the reins of power despite numerous attempts by his enemies to bring him down. Later, Gillen was denied heading the team due to these statements. He was also accused by the Miami Cuban community. Finally, to save his position, he had to offer his apology to the general public. I need to understand the Cuban people. As I told you before, I would oppose anyone who violates the law. If I come to know that an exiled Cuban is breaking the law, I will certainly condemn him in my article. They attached a bomb under my car. We were six people. In another incident, a conference in Cuba on immigration came under attack. All the conference participants had to protect their houses in Florida by security guards for a month. In the 1990s, these attacks were quite normal in Miami, weren't they? Here even some alleys were named after those who committed the attacks. It's hard to believe that this city is one of the cities of the United States. It's unbelievable. If you just listen to the phone calls to a radio channel as well as the statements made by the program's commentator, you will find out how they provoke violence. If you don't approve the ideas of the right-wing community of Miami with the Cuban background, you will be considered the enemies. Versailles restaurant is situated here in the center of Miami. The Cuban people gather here and discuss daily issues. They drink coffee and eat sandwiches, but they mostly gather here at the times of conflict and discuss the relevant issues. So we have come here to find out what they know about the Cuban Five. 
tema de los cinco de Cuba. De los el, cinco de Cuba. Sí, sí. los cinco de Cuba. No, nunca he escuchado el, el tema, ¿no? Qué bueno que va bien, que va muy moderno, ¿no? Que está, son unos cantantes, ¿no? Que hacen unas canciones de Cuba. Es un grupo de, de espías que fueron encontrados espiando ilegal en este país y, y fueron procesados y fueron a juicio y fueron a, hallados culpables. No, se tratan de los cinco, los cinco héroes que dicen que están presos, ¿no? ¿No? Estaban espiando aquí, los cogieron y los metieron presos, bien hecho. ¿Qué más querían? Here on the first street in Small Havana, in the center of Miami, a big placard was posted on the restaurant, Free the Cuban Five. But the placard was later removed by the Cuban people. This placard was sponsored by Radio Miami and Martiana, the civil association of the Radio Marti's fans, one of a few organizations that pose challenges to political figures in Miami. The placard saying Free the Cuban Five called on the people to visit the internet page of the radio. Pro-Castro groups, including the famous white-dressed women, gather here in La Cubanidad Square in Miami every Friday. This is the civil association of Radio Marti's fans. We'll talk to its members later. The civil association of the Radio Marti's fans aims to help the dissidents inside Cuba. We are proud of them. We hold demonstrations every Friday to support Cuba. We all gather here in La Cubaniad Square and voice our anger over the Cuban government, crimes and violations of human rights. What has brought you here? Why do you come here on Fridays? Es decir, de manifestarse públicamente en la vía pública. Todo lo, eh, dedicamos un todos los viernes a Cuba, de una hora de ocho y media a nueve y media de la noche, y ahí expresamos toda la, todo lo que sabemos de Cuba. Bueno, la importancia de tener este tipo de organización es que tú expresas lo que tú sientes. Yo no vine para vivir bien aquí, yo vine para luchar por Cuba aquí. Despliego todo el odio que siento hacia ese tirano maldito de todos los genocidios posibles en el mundo, solamente le lleva la, la corona el Hitler. Y después de él está Fidel Castro y después los Césares y los demás asesinos que han habido en la historia. Sé que voy a volver a Cuba libre y si no, a lo mejor voy y le corto el pescuezo porque él no tiene cuello, él tiene pescuezo porque es un animal. En fin, esos son mis sentimientos. Y cultivo una rosa blanca. While we were talking to the white dress women, Miguel Sigler joined us to express his viewpoints. We were in a jubilant mood when finally they were arrested and convicted. In addition to these five men, there are many more agents working as the Castro's government spies in various countries. They were paid and sent to the US by Castro to infiltrate into the various organizations of this country. Moreover, they planned to infiltrate into the Pentagon. These claims are tested by the information obtained from their computers. That's why they were convicted of spying for the idolatrous government of Castro. Actually, they were five terrorists rather than five spies. They are to blame as one of them infiltrated into the Hermanas al Rescatate organization. They identified the flight paths of the aircrafts that delivered relief and rescue services to those who were lost in the international waters and brought them back to the US. The Cuban regime downed these aircrafts and killed their crew. Who is Luis Posada Carriles? Castro's government spent billions of dollars stolen from the people to mount a propaganda campaign against Luis Posada Carriles a friend of mine. He is a man of good character. He can't hurt anyone. I know him personally. Castro has a hatred of him because he has always fought against the country's idolatrous regime. 
Moreover, Castro has tried to defame him at the international level. It is obvious that he isn't a terrorist, otherwise he would have been imprisoned in this rule-governed country. He was presumably accused of involvement in the Rio incident or the bomb explosion on a Barbados plane that was carrying the Cuban athletes en route to Cuba. But the case has not been proved yet. I believe that Fidel Castro, who I hate from the bottom of my heart, planted the bomb on the plane himself. Like the majority of the Cuban dissidents, Miguel and his wife Josefa were warmly received in the U.S. This shows the close connection between the U.S. and the Cuban dissidents. We can't go back to the country that we have escaped from. We have to wait for the downfall of this tyrant regime that doesn't let us go to the streets and express our views. We will wait for a social blast to uproot this idolatrous government. If the US government let us return to Cuba, I will fight with Castro upon my arrival. Miguel Sigler means what he says. Some Jewish groups in the United States back up the pro-Israeli candidates. In the American system, people vote for their candidates. In Florida, people are intimidated against carrying any acts in support of Cuba. The U.S. government tries to maintain the political power in this state. Among the U.S. states, Florida ranks third in terms of importance and electoral status. The U.S. authorities not only turn a blind eye to the terrorists that are involved in criminal acts under the pretext of anti-Castro activities, but also support and award them. Luis Posada Cariles was prosecuted and went on trial. All of us saw his trial. One testimony helped him narrowly escape conviction. I cannot say the sworn witness was paid to give the testimony. I think Luis Posada Careles was released because they failed to prove the accusations leveled against him. I believe in justice in the North America and the US judicial system. In the US, some groups are calling for administration of justice and the release of the Cuban Five by organizing campaigns and holding demonstrations. Recently, the activists and some political figures attended a gathering in Washington under the title of Five Days for the Cuban Five. Danny Glover, who has organized numerous campaigns for the release of the Cuban Five, was among the participants. Uh, it's, it's what's critical. And as we build a movement among citizens, it's not Danny Glover personally because Danny Glover personally doesn't have a relationship with the President of the United States, but Danny Glover as a part of a movement that's building and that's growing to demand that the Cuban Five uh, be given justice and sent home and freed. That's the movement that I'm a part of. I said once that uh, American political leaders simply can't behave rationally. It makes no sense. I mean, U.S.-Cuba US policy makes no sense whatever. The U.S. Constitution entitles the president to pardon the convicts. This means that the president could reduce sentences of the convicts for a certain time without overturning the court's verdict. It is a common practice in the U.S. Thus, we call for reduction of sentences of the Cuban Five. We could secure justice for more people by means of our influence, credit and common goal. As the people of Latin America, we call on the president to administer justice and free the Cuban Five from prison. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now.
In London, there are some organizations that try to raise awareness about the Cuban Five. A gallery in London has exhibited the paintings and drawings of Juan Antonio Guerrera and Gerardo Hernandez. The issue of the Cuban Five has been highlighted by the concerted efforts of our friends. Some people support them and call for their release by posting placards. Such actions had been forbidden for years, but the movement has made a significant progress. Meanwhile, such a grave injustice has drawn the attention of the people all over the world to the Cuban Five. In the exhibition, we talked to Mirta Rodriguez, Antonio Guerrero's mother, whom, despite her age, is fighting restlessly against those who treated her son unjustly. Fight against terrorism is in human character. The Cuban Five managed to have great achievements. In the 1990s, when Cuba was hit by the brutal and vicious attacks, we didn't know how to defend ourselves. We had neither weapons nor explosive materials. They were arrested at dawn on Saturday. I think Obama has the legal power to do this. I'm sure that he'll return home. This hope gives me the motive to live, and I can't abandon it. I'll wait until the end of his term of imprisonment, even if he is sentenced to two life imprisonment terms. We cherish this hope forever, and we know that the situation will change for the better. In London, we talked to Adriana Perez, Gerardo's wife. Gerardo is the only member of the Cuban Five who has been sentenced to life imprisonment. He has just met his wife, Adriana, for the first time since his arrest in 1998. Geraldo and I hadn't seen each other for 14 years. The U.S. didn't give me the visa. It was like torture for me. It's so hard to be far from the one who you love and is everything for you because you are not given the visa to meet him. I have the absolute right to meet my husband. Once the U.S. authorities told me that I was denied visa for security concerns. Next time that I managed to go to the U.S., I was planning to meet the heads of the terrorist organizations. This means that they themselves accept the existence of these organizations in the U.S. The media played a crucial role in creating a hostile atmosphere and spreading propaganda while the Cuban Five were on trial. They did their best to divert the attention of the international community from the Cuban Five, and they succeeded to do that. Although it took a long time to inform the general public of our viewpoints, the situation has gradually changed. Now we are supported not only by our relatives and friends, but also by the public and private sector organizations and governments. Today, President Obama is the only person who can free these men. We try to convey our message to him. But the U.S. has always adopted a discriminatory policy and makes false claims about fight against terrorism. The U.S. has hatred for these men and is powerless to deal with them. We call for clarification of the truth, even if it takes many years. The Cuban nation always seeks truth, and they are proud of the Cuban Five. The case of the Cuban Five is 14 years old now. Since the Cuban Revolution, the island has dealt with the issue of anti-Cuban terrorism at national and international levels. The Cuban nation could be viewed in various ways, but terrorism has just one definition.
had an explosion and we are defended immediately. We had fire on that. Okay, silver, Giovanna, four, five, five. We are requested immediately, immediately landing. Cierra la puerta, cierra la puerta. Eso es Cada cubana de Portugal, ocasionando la muerte de dos compañeros, 6 de octubre es destruido en pleno vuelo un avión de cubana de aviación con 73 personas a bordo. Detrás de estos hechos está la CIA y casi sin, sin excepción las organizaciones terroristas que radican en Estados Unidos y actúan impunemente en territorio de ese país In the mid-1980s, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan established Radio Marti News Channel for the Cuban people who have been denied full access to information. For instance, people are not informed of the time when a hurricane hits their country. This has happened before. Radio Marti has actually backed the Cuban nation and tries to convey no political messages. Donde se evita. To me, llevados a cabo contra Cuba, tenemos los siguientes. Año 1976, una bomba es colocada en la embajada. Miami is the political hub of Hispanic Americans. It's just enough to watch the TV programs covering various political issues at national and international levels in Spanish and English. The radio channels have the same story. You may remember what happened to José Guilén. All of these issues just happened in the political hub of Miami, where people need to gain political insight. But in Miami, there are only anti-Castro views. This political culture suppresses any statements made in support of Cuba or of Castro. <laughs> 